Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, an interview series by the Prog Space where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Welcome back to another episode of The Prog Talks. I'm your host, Dario. And as always, before we start, a little reminder that you can get us a cup of coffee or tea. Uh, this is one is tea, actually, because it's already uh, late, later in the afternoon, uh, almost evening. Um, but now um, I want to welcome our guests for this week. And it is uh, the band Rage of Light from Switzerland. And... Um, it's actually the whole band, all three of them. Uh, welcome to the Proc Talks. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so nice to be here. Thank you for the invite. Yeah, um, I'm I'm curious about uh, about the band because I haven't heard about you guys before. Um, but of course, I have read a little bit and I have listened to your music. Um, and um, between the first and second album, there was um, a major change in the lineup, which is uh, the new singer, Martina. Um, so yeah, the new album, Redemption, the second album is actually dropping today as this episode also drops on Wednesday, uh, November 8th. And um, now I just want to wanna, wanna um, give, give the... Uh, pass the torch over to you guys. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what happened between album one, uh, which was Imploder in 2019, and now the second album with a lineup change and um, yeah, where, where, where we're at now. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Should, should I, I don't know if, uh, yeah, we should yeah. decide talks first and <laughs> I don't know, but maybe. I think, uh, probably Jonathan should kind of Explain the transition. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably. So yeah, um, it's a good question. Actually, yeah, in, in two years, there's a whole lot of things that happened, uh, including COVID, of course, for everyone <laughs> that uh, had uh, an impact for sure. But um, I'd say that for Rage of Light, uh, yeah, we, we went through a phase of really um, doing lots of stuff with Imploder and uh, shows we had after that. And then, I don't know, Suddenly, there were like less motivation, and also, um, yeah, of course, COVID stopped us from doing live shows. Uh, we had also other things going on with our lives, and um, yeah, uh, Melissa had also like a lot of uh, fun. So Melissa, our previous uh, singer, had a lot of um, uh, things to do on uh, her own, like uh, for her other projects. And um, yeah, at one point we were like, okay, should we just go back to doing some singles and not uh, doing uh, any more albums? And we were like, oh, okay, yeah, that, that might work. So yeah, we were a bit like, um, we, we went through different phases. And um, yeah, at one point uh, after, after hmm, several months, I guess, we were like, yeah, we, we kind of want want to go back to to making more music and making another album and uh suddenly we were like uh really motivated again and and yeah melissa was like it's cool for you but i i'm not sure i can i can really follow and we were totally understanding we were like okay it's yeah we kind of understand you have your own band at infinitum who's doing a lot of stuff. So uh, yeah, we, we decided that it was for the best for everyone to just uh, split and go uh, separate ways. And that's when Noe and, and, and I started to start, started to look for, for another singer. And that's where we, we find Martina, who is just, uh, yeah, who was the right person. We, we knew exactly when we, we heard her, we were like, oh my God, she's just, yeah perfect for us she's so great so so nice and and uh yeah i don't know we're like okay let's do this album with her it's gonna rock and hopefully people are gonna like it so that's where we are now i guess <laughs> um yeah maybe i can chime in a little bit uh how, how it looks for me because i i have uh, to say um martina and i we we know each other from like for several years uh, meeting at proc power europe um before actually 
we, we, we knew each other before I ever heard any music from you. <laughs> right. And um, so uh, I, I saw what you, you uh, I always see on social media, on Facebook, what, what you're up to. And, and then it, it was a little bit uh, very, it happened very fast. I had the feeling, okay, now you're posting, oh, now you're in Switzerland. And then a couple of weeks later, the first video came out <laughs> with this new project of yours uh, that you joined. Um, how was it for you um, joining this new project? And um, uh, I mean, uh, people who know you know you also have your um your own other band, of course, Ascend the Hollow. And um, how is it different now for you to work uh, with, with Rage of Light? Um, are you like just the singer or did you also come in with your lyrical lyrics writing as I know you're an accomplished uh, writer? Uh, so um, yeah, tell us a little bit about this new project, uh, how it feels for you and, and, and uh, yeah. Yeah, so... Basically, going back to, you know, the topic of the pandemic and how just it affected everyone and the musicians as well. Uh, just, uh, yeah, everyone knows already how depressing it is <laughs> for musicians. So for me also, I kind of uh, went into this um, state in my mind where I was uh, just not not sure what's, uh, what's going to happen next. Obviously, uh live music was out of the question and um um yes as you as you may know uh the tour that we had with ascend the hollow has been already postponed a few times so i kind of um decided to sort of uh spend that time teaching myself how to record myself basically and uh, to see if i can spark my own cre creativity that way and if, if i can maybe reach out to other musicians and do something on a distance. So I did that. And then one day I just saw this uh, ad on Facebook that Rage of Light are new, looking for a new singer. And kind of the thought really crossed my mind really kind of briefly that, oh, maybe it's something that, you know, I could try. Why not? I can. Um, did, you, did you know the music? Audition, you know? <laughs> did, did you know their music before? Did you know the first album? Uh, At that point? I, I knew the music before I kind of um, sort of uh, I saw what Rage of Light was doing as a band kind of in passing on social media and, mm -hmm. and uh, stuff like that. So you were aware of them and what I was. Yeah, I was aware. Made. I knew that, uh, of course, um, um, music wise, they're not too far off from what, I, what I'm already doing. I'm also, uh, you know, doing clean singing and growling and uh, I'm definitely into that kind of hybrid of heavy music, extreme music, and, uh, you know, electronics. So it was definitely something, you know, up my alley. <laughs> so I thought, well, okay, let's see <laughs> what happens with that. And then uh, the guys un answered so that they were interested and they sent me um, a song to try out. And um, then I recorded it here at home and, send it back and and then after luckily that, you, yeah. you luckily you had already started teaching yourself <laughs> recording yourself yeah. <laughs> yes yes so i recorded myself from here uh totally you know like home production and <laughs> send it back and uh and yeah and, and then things went really really fast from there because the guys were super just motivated to make more music and uh i was really happy about that because that's just exactly what i needed you know i really needed something to lift me up from that kind of pandemic depression i would say <laughs> yeah so very quickly then um i went to switzerland and uh, we spent a super productive week recording you know the full album and also making videos and uh, we even squeezed in some sightseeing <laughs> <laughs> so so, <laughs> so when, when you jumped yeah. onto the rage of light ship was the album already finished or uh, and and you were like almost yes almost the vocals, almost there were do you had the chance to to make some some of your own imprint on it on the music yeah, definitely. Uh, there was um uh, most of the material i would say was already uh, written uh some of the lyrics as well but then some of the lyrics uh, i wrote and it's actually quite um interesting to see how uh jonathan's lyrics are kind of really they have a very similar vibe to what i am writing so that's you know kind of like an outsider person 
would listen to it. And I think our uh, our styles are really blending very well together because uh, we went through some very similar things kind of um, to do with mental health or kind of self-development or, uh, you know, self-doubt, even things like that. And um, kind of those kind of feelings that I think many people uh, experienced, especially during the pandemic, you know, because everyone slowed down and suddenly a lot of things were not possible. And a lot of people started maybe even questioning, am I uh, doing something right with my life? Is this what actually makes me happy? You know. Yeah. I, I know a lot of people. A lot of people are in this rut. So, without you know planning for it to be a concept album, we kind of noticed that okay, this is actually following following that kind of theme. You know, kind of overcoming some uh, um, battle battles that we may have inside and looking for that you know bigger purpose for uh, for ourselves in this new reality. And so that's kind of um, why the album is called Redemption. That's sort of redemption from our own, you know, feelings. Wow. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it sounds very cool um, when, when you know, when something just clicks and matches that's like like a very cool feeling and uh, uh i think that's that's uh those things um can can definitely definitely have the power to um lift you up out of a pit no, but yeah yeah absolutely and um <laughs> i also want to say that it's it's amazing how uh, how quickly we we clicked together you know as uh, musicians and as friends as well it's as if we've been you know, friends already forever, but we only know each other since like May, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it was really so, crazy. It was crazy how everything went fast, but also like smoothly. And I don't know how it's a bit like it was supposed to happen. I don't know. It was really crazy. And I was really happy how everything worked well. And, and like Martina said, with the lyrics, with the melodies, I was so happy what she, um, added uh, creatively in the band um, because yeah she she not only wrote the lyrics but of course she also uh, for for six uh, songs out of the nine I think you wrote um, every every bit of uh, vocal lines uh, there were there were only those three songs uh, uh, where I had those ideas for the melodies and uh, for the lyrics and Again, I was like, okay, you can do whatever you want with those if you want to, 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 to remove it and or do something else. But she, she really, yeah, took what what was already there for those parts and and do something better. It was it was really awesome, and I was so happy how it it turned out. And and to to hear those songs um, taking another dimension with her, it was really such a good feeling and, and now i'm so proud of what we we just achieved together yeah awesome yeah, yeah we, we we might jump back to the to the to the topics of the lyrics maybe later when we talk about the videos as well um but now um i think it it would be cool for, to hear from from uh, you guys jonathan and noe um uh, about the your musical vision as you guys uh, founded the band and um how how would you describe the music for for people who have never heard a song by Rage of Light and uh, what's what's yeah where where you're coming from musically? It's funny because maybe maybe no, you can tell your horizon because it's a bit different than mine and and it's Very sort of shift yeah. together. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's a bit funny because uh, the main compositor of Rage of Light is clearly John. He came out uh, with uh, uh, every idea, every composition, uh, and I just came here with my uh, uh, old uh, desk of uh, past and uh, Lamb of God and uh, I'm so metal things, and I just add up a little bit of um, of arch of violence in Rage of Light, just a bit more. But um, we we had a, an old group uh, with John, with uh, which. Um, which was um, a little bit more violent than uh, than other Death bands. Core, I think, yeah. Death Core. Yes, that's metal. That's metal that's melodic. Metal. Called uh, another fat. And uh, after that, uh, John uh, just came out with uh, a Hedge of Light and asked me to record some uh, some guitars. 
and I just say yes and uh, never get out of it. Uh, <laughs> from yeah, because at first it was really. <laughs> it was really something just supposed to be a, like a studio project that was um, side, uh, yeah, side from this project, Not Afraid, that he was talking about, and also my mm. other band at that time. It was called Tis Rider, and uh, yeah, I, I come from more uh, symphonic power metal um, uh, kind of yeah area with um, with my previous bands and. Um, also, I don't know. I I kind of always liked the dance and trance uh, electronic music um, from yeah I don't know from the the yeah from nineties uh, or more the two two thousands. I don't know how you say that. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, uh, okay. something like that. The beginning and of the twentieth century. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, I always thought like for, for really a long time, um, the first ideas I had was really long time ago. I was like, oh, it could be awesome to just mix like trance and metal. Let's do it. And uh, I remember I had this really like demo from, yeah, I think 2007. And that's why people sometimes say that Rage of Light exists since 2007, because at one point I, I must have said that, but no, it it, it, it was recreated at in 2015, 2016, but the first ideas were that's true from um, from that time, 2007, and uh, that's really a, a weird demo. That uh, that's yeah, uh, everything like never, but it's it's fun because that was the first time I created this mix of trance and metal. Of course, other bands are. Uh, already did it and and there are all other bands that mix trance and metal but I, I i was really trying to to yeah mix it in a new way and, and try different stuff with that and and also like when noe joined i was listening more to melodic death metal so that's why i was also bringing more of those elements and and yeah like noe said uh, then he, he started to to add more violence or uh, sharp riffs and stuff like that and it was uh, I think that the mix is, is pretty cool and I'm, I'm really happy that I can explore all this If you are enjoying this interview, please head over to theprogspace.com for more reviews, articles, pictures and interviews all about progressive music. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram theprogspace.com Yeah, you just mentioned like like uh, there, there's been also already some other bands who tried that mix, and there's this one sw- like quite legendary Swiss band that I that I can't grasp the name right now. That were like black metal with 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 you know with electronic oh, drums. Samuel. Right. Samuel, of course, yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, those guys are awesome. Yeah, it's it's more maybe industrial a bit. I don't know. Yeah, but. Yeah, it's also mm-hmm. for sure. For me, also, um, what Rage of Light is doing is quite uh, unique in a way that it's not just kind of mixing um, metal with electronic music. There's also a lot of different influences. For me, for instance, um, as soon as I heard the, the new material, I could immediately tell that okay, it's, it's going kind of into the progressive uh, territory and. Uh, with with a few kind of symphonic even influences here and there. Uh, so I think it's a really interesting, eclectic mix of styles and that kind of also influenced um, my vocal ideas. I really wanted to do something quite varied because uh, there's really just a lot of uh, room for, you know, trying out some stuff and uh, using different uh, vocal textures and different vocal techniques, different deliveries. And at the same time, I was trying to Kind of keep the balance so that it's not too too busy. So I hope I succeeded in that. <laughs> yeah, first time I think we 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 uh, we wrote about yeah and new singles coming out and stuff. It was when the second single "Breaking Infinity" dropped, and I was saying yeah these these uh, triplet arpeggios are really really cool. Yes. Um, in which they sh- uh, like how they shape the song and and the, the flow and the feeling of the song, um, which brings me to the to the singles and the, and the videos. I mean, the, there's uh, two videos out at the time that we rec- we are recording this. Um, the first um, 
was uh, lead the riot and um, the second breaking infinity uh, lead the riot was uh, like a huge success. I mean, you guys have like uh, awesome, uh, a lot of uh, amassed a lot of views already in a really short time. Um, but um, like uh, conceptually, I think uh, there's there's a lot more happening in breaking infinity and uh, looking at the at the credits on on YouTube. There's uh, of, of of course that uh, Jonathan, you are responsible for those as well, right? Um, uh, so maybe you can tell us a little bit about about the the making of the videos and and especially also adding that um, that that story element into breaking infinity, um, which is like always uh, a very interesting thing, I think, like compared to just having the band play somewhere. <laughs> No, it's true. It's true. Yeah, um, the videos in general are, are something that we really love to do ever since we started Rage of Light because um, we, we started by doing like this EP and and uh, we really wanted to yeah make videos out of out of it and um, at at that time I already started um, doing videos for my other band and I was like yeah it's it's cool it's not that's hard you, you just need to have like okay some some gear and uh, also like i don't know just try to edit and and yeah i i, I realized that it was something i really liked uh, i really enjoyed to do to, to just yeah be able also to create the the, the visual uh, of, um, of a song like this uh, video so yeah we started doing more and more videos and each time we we're like oh maybe we can try something different we can at this concept we can yeah, yeah challenge ourselves by doing new stuff and and um i think we we often pushed us a bit to to try different stuff there's this first song uh, on the ep uh, um, um a music video that is called sick which is uh, not at all the this the music video and the song that um that uh, is uh, well known for for us it's, but it's definitely something like that yeah, a bit like Breaking Infinity, uh, where we tried really some conceptual stuff, and and I'm still so proud of this video, even though it's not the the one that worked the best. But and for Breaking, it's it's funny because it's it really started um, uh, with Noe and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, one of those evenings where we we are uh, at at home uh, with him just. Uh, you know, talking about music, uh, watching music videos, drinking beers, and and, yes. and having some fun. And... Right, right on this couch. Yeah. Here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And this song, Martina was not um, in the the band yet at that point. Um, we were, I think, we were in the process of looking for the new singer at that point. Yes. I think we were uh, auditioning new people uh, at that time, but uh, we never had contact with Martina yet. No, I don't. Yeah, and but the song was was there because that's one of Breaking Infinity is actually the the song one of the songs that we we send out to the the the, the singer who were uh, auditioning to to try, and that's actually uh, on this one that Martina sent us. Her version, and we were like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> and, and, no uh, <laughs> and mostly, the song is mostly the same. We we kept uh, from her de demo to the final version. Um, it's it's mostly the same because she, it was already like awesome. But anyway, we were just talking with Noah, and we we're like, "Yeah, this song, um, the lyrics about uh, you know the, this uh, there's there's a lot going on with the the hourglass um, metaphor or image," and we were like. Uh, Oh yeah, we should totally like build a huge hourglass and just put our stuff in, inside or have a story and and we can draw in sand and everything and and yeah, we had those crazy ideas and we we're like, okay, and, and then we actually started to 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 when see you think if, about uh, it, yeah. To no way, you you contacted some some people some to, yeah. <laughs> to and build a hour a huge hourglass and mm -hmm. but then yeah, <laughs> it, was it was really really expensive. So uh, where was People just uh, say to me, no, you're fucking crazy. Don't do that. Or yes, but it's going to cost you 10,000 uh, uh, francs. So yeah. no, yeah. <laughs> but then the ideas were there. We were like, yeah, talking about those ideas. And and I, um, one evening I came out with this story uh, that is basically what we, you can see in the, in the music video that was a bit tying up every ideas that we had those um, 
those evenings that we were <laughs> drinking and thinking. And, um, and yeah. Drinking uh, and for thinking, this, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> that <was laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we're like, okay, maybe not an hour glass, but we can still use our glasses in, in in the music video. And yeah, the shower, the the shower scene in the end, where the the actress Joan is drowning in the sand. That's what we came out with to 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 just represent this our glass. And we're like, oh, it's actually better because we can include that in a in a real story in a, in something that you can just yeah that that is. Um, that you can believe so yeah and i and always think that stories and music videos are kind of hard to do and also like risky because uh, if the song is too short or if the story is not good enough or long enough it's often a bit uh straining or a bit lame sometimes i often i don't know i end up watching music videos and i'm like what's the story what, 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 what where are we going and I, I really wanted to have something like that is um, you know worth doing a story and yeah. I hope we achieve that because it's, the song uh, is long we had time to do it and I think it works but yeah yeah, just... uh, then there's then there's also the other uh, like the other extreme. I just uh, just today we re re received the new Billy Talent album in the promos that will come out in January, and uh, that reminded me of those last like those three huge uh, like short movies that they did like last year or two two years ago, like uh, of like three songs, and and it was like a continuous storyline was like really epic and huge production value <laughs> and but but yeah it, of course it is it is um it is expensive and it's also um it's an artistic thing to say uh, for a band to say yeah, we want we want to um invest more um creativity but mostly it's also money <laughs> into the into the music yeah, it's a lot of work and money but the the, mm. the good thing about doing it ourselves is it doesn't cost as much as, as yeah of course for other people to do because for this one actually it was not that expensive the, the the most expensive thing we had to buy was the shower we had to build this shower really because it was not possible to use another shower because of course we drone we used like 250 kilos of, of sand in it and was also to shoot for the angles it was not really possible to to shoot in a or really harder to shoot in a in a real shower so but yeah, that's the good thing about us doing the music video. It's it may not be as pro as other videos that you can have for bands who yeah spend sometimes like thousands of, of uh, euros to to shoot a video. But it's it's cool because we we still can do a lot of stuff and and, and yeah even if it's a lot lot of work like really long hours <laughs> in the making to do that. But it's it's I think it's cool. I mean that's that's really uh, part of the, the the magic and the charm of Rage of Light is that uh, the, just yeah the uh, the band is so focused on uh, you know producing lots of videos lots of content and is independent in that and that that's really something I think really great and it uh, it gives a lot of independence to a band like us to be able to make videos. You know, on our own without uh, hiring anyone, because um, yeah, obviously the financial part is usually like the the limiting part. But it's also something you know I think more special when uh, when things are a little bit you know DIY and uh, you know every everyone is on board helping, and you can see in behind the scenes uh, you know what that looks like, and uh, everyone is having fun and um, yeah enjoying themselves during uh, during the production. But uh, I, remember, I remember, I remember, I saw the script for you know Breaking Infinity for the first time, and I was like, oh, "How are they going to pull that off? I really don't know." <laughs> no, 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 no. Speaking, speaking of music videos, now I remember like a very, very, like, like more than ten, but probably fifteen years ago. I think uh, you, Martina, you act, you were acting in a Zero Hour video, was it? <laughs> That that they shoot that they were shooting at, at Prog Power, like that's some underground yes. uh, stuff Love right there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on with Rage of Light, there's 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 of course another video that uh, now as the episode is out and you guys out there are listening uh, is out as well, uh, which is for the second song of the album 2.0, 2.0, um, and um, 
listening to the to the to the song uh, in the album, I, I there was one specific uh, thing that I thought was really cool. Uh, I think that you you uh, Martina and Jonathan, you are trading off like growls, and 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 I th I thought that that had a really really cool effect. Um, yeah, it was just very cool. So yeah, that's that's another uh, video that I haven't seen yet, um, but that uh, you guys will be able to see, to watch on the Proc Space uh, on our website as well. Um, so definitely go check that out. Um, finally, um, I, I we're coming uh, towards the end of this uh, interview already, sadly. But um, Martina, you already mentioned that. Um, the, with the with the lyrics uh with the topics of the lyrics you're often um um yeah writing about mental health and and then struggles and and all all of this stuff and of course you also uh write for blogs in this capacity as an advocate for for mental health awareness and all this and and uh tying with 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 women's rights and 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 all this is i think it's it's kind of uh it, it's it, it of course it interconnects with with your creative output as well um not only like writing uh in a blog um but uh, but writing creatively lyrics um now um what i really want to to to, to ask you what i think is a very very interesting topic is the um Yeah, I want to talk about the, the that the darn F word, female fronted in the metal world. And because um I think it's it's kind of a blessing and the curse because there's like there's whole magazines and there's whole festivals like only featuring female fronted metal bands, but of course it for one it doesn't uh say anything about the the subgenre of the of the music of uh, like death metal black metal melodic metal whatever and and on the other hand it can also kind of quickly turn around and being like just objectifying the front women uh so what what is your take on that being being a, a woman in metal as well <laughs> yes i have very <laughs> well not very but um well mixed feelings as well because as you said it can be a little bit of a you know blessing and a curse I think it's really uh, fantastic that there's uh, there's been so many bands, you know, with, uh, with with women as 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 leaders in metal in the recent years, and especially there's really uh, lots of us who can do both uh, clean singing and growling. It's really you know it's not a novelty anymore. Um, still, it's funny to me sometimes to see you know the shock in people's uh, you know faces, you know, to to see that. Is to see me doing that, for instance, for the first time, because uh, for them it's the first time that they witness something like that. But really, there's there's just many many uh, bands now uh, with fantastic female vocalists doing that. So, so in a way, indeed, uh, the, the female fronted metal has no meaning really, because all all it says is that uh, this band has a female vocalist. <laughs> That's all it says. You know, we don't have male fronted uh, metal. Um, so I kind of understand, you know, that it was, it was first kind of um, adapted, maybe not created, but just adapted as a, you know, shortcut just to explain to, to people that, hey, here's a metal band uh, uh, with a female uh, vocalist. Because if we go back to the 90s, let's say, where there weren't that many bands like that, you know, one of the precursors like, like The Gathering, you know, with uh, Anneke van Heersberger, that's when this kind of terminology came to be just just to you know maybe explain to people that hey this is check this out this is something unusual you know women on vocals wow you know in metal <laughs> whereas now it really doesn't make much sense especially now that we see i think metal as a genre is also expanding really rapidly and it's really exciting to see so many bands doing things kind of like us you know um, uh mixing eclectic eclectic influences and electronic music and a little bit of this a little bit of that so it really makes no no sense to stick to that but i kind of you know i'm not really actively condemning the terminology so to speak because i know many people uh um follow groups you know um that feature female vocalists simply because um well they 
they maybe like that kind of um, aesthetic that a female voice brings into, you know, into the music. And they want to support, you know, new bands with with female vocalists and things like that. So I think it's there's mostly it's mostly positive, though. I know there there are a few maybe creeps as well (laughs) who are maybe objectifying, you know, uh, women for being women. But yeah, I think in another few years, um, this this term will be used less and less. Yeah, um, you. There's not much I can add here. Um, I just wanted to thank you guys, uh, all three of you, for being on the Prog Talks. Uh, all the best with the release of Redemption, the second Rage of Light album. Um, we hope after the pandemic there's going to be live music again. Of course, we all do. Um, for now, I want to thank you guys out there for listening. I uh, hope you enjoy what we're doing. And if you do so, please uh, help us out with the like and subscribe and also that cup of tea or cup of coffee um also don't forget to check out uh, the socials of rage of light and follow them and uh, check out their music their new album redemption is out today for now that's it uh for the prog talks this week um until next time stay safe and keep spreading that prog love the prog talks produced by the prog space Main host, Rune Belsvik Reynos. Produced by Rune Belsvik Reynos, Vanessa and Matthias Kirsch. All graphics and animations by Vanessa Kirsch. Intro theme by Giuseppe Negri. Outro theme by Zach Munoviz. This was the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. See you in a week.